Hello everyone, and welcome to a guide on how to complete Prison Heist. This is not a speedrun guide. Um, I might do that sometime in the future. However, this is just for casual running uh, to get, you know, the best rewards that you can possibly get with the maximum amount of time you can um, uh, have in the vault room. So, obviously, um, when it comes to Prison Heist, there are a couple things you need to remember right off the bat before we actually go into it. Um, difficulty does obviously affect um, the rewards and uh, and how much time you have in a vault room. I'll go into just in detail, detail in just a second. So, story mode and normal. Um, in order to get Guru Reward, award, which is the best reward uh, that you can possibly get for Prison Heist, i.e. you get gold weapons and key mods inside the hard lock chests. In order to get Guru Reward, um, if you're playing on story mode or, or normal difficulty, you need to complete prison in under 8 minutes. Um, if you're playing on hard difficulty, you have more time. It's actually more lenient. You need to complete it under 15 minutes. And if you're playing on Nightmare, which is what I am on right now, in fact, I'm not just Nightmare, but Nightmare Game Plus, um, the game gives you 25 minutes to uh, complete prison in order to get Guru Reward. Um, that's not the only thing that the difficulty changes. Obviously, you know, there's obviously the difficulty of you know, toughness and damage of enemies as well, but uh, we're not focusing on that. Uh, the, another thing that difficulty changes in regards to this is the fact that um, uh, the difficulty affects how much time you have in the vault room to loot everything before you have to run out. Because if you obviously, if you don't run out in time, you will blow up, you will die potentially losing any ledger points you have if you're on a nightmare difficulty. Uh, but not only that, you, you also lose the loot that you loot from the chests if you die. So you need to make sure to get out there before then. Uh, if you're playing on normal or story mode, uh, you get one minute to loot the vault, which is barely anything. If you're playing on hard, you get two minutes, which is double already, looking good. Still not amazing though. But if you're playing on nightmare, um, you get three minutes to loot the vault room. So. In an ideal world, you would want to be playing Nightmare uh, in order to get the most time possible to loot the vault room and also to give you the biggest buffer in order to actually unlock Guru Reward in the first place. Now, I'm going to be playing on Nightmare, Nightmare Game Fights, as I said before, just to demonstrate um, the times as well as uh, how you guys can get through this um, with minimal effort. Um, it's still something that isn't, isn't really easy, but it's pretty straightforward in terms of what you need to do. Um, so I have a couple um, things I want to get out of the way before we go. There's some key items that would be useful in our run. So, as far as my um, uh, kit goes, uh, I have the grappling hook for obvious reasons. Movement is key. Quiet dagger to provide speed buffs. This is optional, uh, but it's extra speed, so I always like to have it. The reason why I have two shotguns here, and the semi-automatic shotgun, by the way, is the best variant um, uh, version. Uh, eight rounds in a magazine. Oh, not a magazine, it's not a magazine, you know what I mean though. Eight rounds before needing to reload. Uh, the reason why I have two of them is because to save time reloading I like to switch between them. And advanced police rifle to deal with uh, human enemies because you can always pick up loot from, um, pick up the stuff from them. Uh, ammo from the uh, enemies for the advanced police rifle. And I'm just using the base one rather than like a, you know, a DLC blueprint on top of it. Just to show that, you know, you can use a regular uh, rifle with it. Um, Resistance Booster is a nice sort of safe item to use as you'll take barely any damage from anyone um, who shoots at you uh, as well as the virals that smack you or anything. Um, explosions obviously are still here but Resistance Boosters are pretty OP and uh, you will you will really benefit from using these especially in the beginning but I'll, I'll demonstrate in just a second. Speed Boosters should go without saying, you'll be really fast, you'll get through faster and therefore uh, make it under the time much easier than usual. Flares will come in uh, later on, um, but it's for a very specific segment, as well as the cloak potion which I have here comes in, uh, into play uh, in a couple uh, segments later on. But in any case, that's all items. Obviously I'm on a fully leveled character, so um, ideally you don't want to be doing this on a low level character. This isn't something that's meant to be straightforward. It's meant to be a tough thing that's added for like a late game person. So anyways, uh, I got my items here. So what I want to do, before I even open the gate, because the timer starts, of course, when we open this gate. So what I want to do, is I want to, I want to charge up my Quiet Dagger. So simply, do you see above he, me here, the Quiet Dagger is actually charging up something in the wet. That is the uh, speed boost that the Quiet Dagger provides. By the way, for those of you who want to get this knife, 
Um, I have, I'll link in the description a way on how to get it, my guide on how to get the, um, the Quiet Egg and Rise of the Phoenix uh, uh, Bounty. Anyways, you can see how it has 10 next to it. We fully charged and look how fast I am compared to not using it. So, I'm going to stack that on top of the speed booster. I forgot to turn off my alerts. Uh, that's fine. It, we can just passively have that on as we go. Um, this is my, I'm using my stream software to record this, but in any case, uh, so we'll stack this with our speed booster in just a second before opening this gate, because in an ideal world we want to do that. So I'm going to stack this up, and uh, oh, I lost it there. Or well, we can just charge it up again. Simply sliding can do it, but vaulting stuff also does that as well. So I'm just going to quickly vault over this, spam and slide, since I'm on Nightmare, it uses up energy. Okay, so I'm going to drink the speed booster, like this. And I'm going to run up here. You can grapple up there too if you want. Continue running. I'm going to drink a resistance booster because we're about to go into this combat area, which we can completely ignore by just bypassing them through here. Notice how I take very little damage running through here. Go through here. I like to vault over this guy to keep my fire dagger charged. Go through here. Turn right. Slide underneath. Over here. Now we have to actually kill this guy. And now this section is the first section where we actually have to stay and fight people. So this is where the resistance booster comes into play. Um, I'm just going to take my time just to demonstrate what's going on here. So let's let's drink a let's go through here and drink our booster. I would highly recommend using the rifle so you can pick up uh, ammo from the enemies that you kill. So right, I'm just doing it right now. So obviously headshots are key. I'm using survivor sense so I can see them through walls and you can pull them up. This is pretty straightforward. If you're running on ammo, just walk over the bodies and you immediately replenish all your ammo back. Keep, a, keep an eye on your health though and your uh, resistance booster duration as due to Nightmare being a Nightmare, the uh, duration is less. We need to drink another one right now. There you go. Here. There. You can shoot through these little metal breaks by the way too. And I like to spam the survivor sense so I can see them through walls and it's very easy to identify and just pop their heads at a distance. That guy just tripped. Hello. There's this guy. Wow, he's having a bad time, isn't he? Bang. Alright. Now that that's over and done with, um, you can just go through this door here. And then since, we've since we only used one shotgun round for the zombie, and... Um, we have, haven't technically lost any um, ammo since we picked it all up from the other guys. So we, let's just drink another booster. And let's just come running through. Go down here, charge up a cry dagger if you, if you want. Fall down here. Come over here. Make sure to jump over that so you don't actually get injured. Come over here, down here. And this is the part where I'm going to switch out the resistance booster for the cloak potion because this part is a key moment. What I'm going to do, um, as soon as you go close to this door here, a goon will pop out and then virals will spawn in and usually you'd have to, you know, um, fight your way through them before opening through but you can actually completely ignore that since you, you only need to open the door. So what I'm going to do, as soon as this door opens, I'm going to drink a, a cloak potion here. Drink it now. Oh, I got hit by that. No worries. Uh, I can just drink that one again. And now we go up to here and lock the pick this door as everyone is uh, calm and not minding their own business. There we go. That's a likely lockpick spot. Open this door and we are finding through without having to deal with any of them. Simple enough. So go through here, charge up fire dagger more, because why not? Here. And this is where our... Um, Flares come into play. So drink a cloak potion for this room so no enemies attack you. But there's, but there are blue volatiles or alpha volatiles or whoever you want to call them that seize through your cloak potion. So you need to also uh, throw flares on the ground so you can lockpick this door right here and pass through that without having to fight everyone. Because if you're fighting everyone, you're wasting time, you're wasting ammo, and you're potentially dying. So it's always preferable just to go through without having to fight anything. So here we have to put this down on the ground and we can. Lock pick in peace. If you throw it in a bad spot, sometimes the volatiles will still attack you. But luckily, we're able to go through fine and we can just run through. 
Now, if you if, if you get stuck lockpicking, of course, because these are hard lockpicks, you can always just exit early, drink another potion, throw another flare, and just go ahead and just keep on going into it. Here. here we go. Up here. Here again, grappling hook obviously helps there. And this one, and this is when it run gets very straightforward. Now that we're just going to be fighting enemies. Um, this part is very straightforward. You just shoot the shit out of everything until they stop moving. So let's just bang. Let's just bang. Now, preferably, you want to get headshots, which I am not. I am missing everything right now. Let's blow up that barrel. Now, I like to focus the uh, demolishers first. Because these are the tough boys. Let me heal as well. Headshots preferably. Because they can be very tough. Let me uh, lower these volatile volatiles virals over here. To blow them up like that. The virals are very squishy. This guy's low. This guy's helmet's off, but these virals are being very annoying. It's up to you. I like to take out these uh, demolishers as soon as I can. Let's go over here and blow up this place here. Full of virals. Oh, it's going to blow up on its own. There you go. Since, since I'm on Nightmare Game Plus, it's a lot tougher for me since they have a lot health, more health. But if you're on regular Nightmare, this should be a problem. Or, um, if you're on normal or hard mode, if you decide to do that route, this should be uh, much easier for you. But as I said, these, this isn't an easy fight. Um, and this isn't something that's meant to be... That you can just suddenly breeze through it all of a sudden. You want to be really close to your maximum damage as well. There you go. And the reason why we're not using shotgun ammo before is we want to save it for this battle. So this guy comes out for the second wave. Just blast the shit out of him. He seems to be weaker than mainly to, to, uh, to guns at least. So when it comes to this part, I just like to uh, line his virals up and shoot him in the head. Now I'm probably going to run out of ammo at some point, so let me just try and line them up so I can get multiple headshots like this with the single rounds. It's pretty satisfying actually. And these guys try to climb up so you can just simply stomp them if you have the skill or shoot these guys at the distance and use the large amounts of rifle ammo that we kept if you run out of shotgun ammo. Hello? So this is why we use shotguns, because they're a lot more devastating than uh, the rifles. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, this... Oh, there's one more guy. Hold on. There you go. Finish the style. Oh, no, there's another one. And there we go. <laughs> and that was seven minutes. So, with practice, you could get this much faster than this. I just try to do this as a little explanation. Um, generally speaking, um, shotguns and rifles are the way to do this. If you use an SMG, you will run out of ammo. Because in the vault room, there is no spare ammo for you to pick up. And I'll go into it in just a second what you can do in this vault room. So there's obviously, now that I ha I, I'm in the vault room here, I'll have three minutes to lockpick this place. Obviously, we can go into do all the nests, uh, nests, do all the chests. But there's also a lot of nice uh, loot that's outside of the chests, not just gold weapons and kings. I'll show you in just a second. Because a lot of you may be thinking, why can't you just use the night, the night hunter boosters? Um, I'm just using a resistance and speed booster just to demonstrate that you can. You don't even need night hunter boosters for this. So look, free shotgun ammo, just replenish for another run. So you can just go on repeat runs over and over again. Pistol as well, if you ever use pistol, I don't know why you would use pistol though. Rifle ammo is full. Let's pick up some more shotgun ammo. There we go. And now we can go up to here and lockpick all the chests for our free loots. And it, and it said before, Guru reward unlocked at the, at the top. Oops. I'm not paying attention to my lockpicks. There you go. So 
we go here. Safety blade and a king. Always guaranteed one gold weapon and uh, one orange weapon there in that scenario. Let's just go here. And I get a good pick. So yeah, I'm not going to go through the rest of it because this is just blabbering on. But yeah, uh, with three minutes you have plenty of time here. Uh, do note though, something that I forgot to say at the beginning of this video, um, that each co-op partner you have reduces the time to loot this place by 10 seconds. So let's say you're in a party of four, in a full, full lobby, co-op lobby, and you play this, you have 30 less seconds to lockpick this place. So if you're normal and you get to the vault room, you have 30 seconds only to complete, because that's one minute minus 30 seconds. That's pretty awful. But uh, if you play on Nightmare, like I said, um, it doesn't get harder. The enemies are the same, uh, but the, you just get a little bit less time. So it's two and a half minutes now, which is, you know, three minutes minus 30 seconds. Um, so that's a very important key factor to remember. Uh, but anyways, let's look at all the other peripheral uh, sort of benefits you can get from the vault room here. So in here, you get a med kit and a 900 booster. Hold on a second. Yes, that is true. There's about five or six of these medical cabinets, and each one of them has a 50% chance of spawning a random booster. But this is a base game booster, like a speed, resistance, light vision, or stamina, or a 900 booster. There's five potion types that can spawn in here, and there's a 50% chance of a booster to spawn. So that is 20% or 50%. Um, is about 10%? No, I can't, no, I'm bad at maths. I'm sorry. 20% of. <laughs> Yeah, anyways, uh, med, med kit is right there. Uh, there's, and also you can also replenish your med kits here as well if you want. Stamina booster, there we go. So I already got one right hand stamina booster from this. Oh, stamina booster there. We we're fairly unlucky, but usually you get at least one like I did there. And you can also restock on lockpicks here. And for whatever reason, sometimes you can find, this says inventory full. This is subsonic ammo. For whatever reason, you can actually find subsonic ammo for silenced pistols in these lockers sometimes. Let's see how, uh, how frequent is it, it is. Electronics, no. Oh, another... more silenced pistol ammo. So you don't need to craft it, you don't need to lo look in the police fans or whatever. Prison Heist is the easiest. Also, you can get those random things spawning in there for whatever reason. But yeah, Prison Heist has a lot more beneficial loot than just the chests with the gold weapons and kings that everyone talks about. It has a lot of nice peripheral stuff with it as well. So in any case, that is about it. If I die in this room because I don't leave before this timer runs out, I will lose the safety blade and smack hammer. And I think the uh, king mods as well, but I'm not sure about that. I just haven't checked that properly. But I, you will lose these loot. However, if you die in here, you won't actually lose any of the loot that you get from anything else. You only lose the loot from the chests. So if you want, you can be anal about it and you can just pick everything and don't care. But in this case, I'm gonna pop out, it's gonna close, and we're done. Um, that's the majority of the things you really need to know about Prison Heist. Um, you can optimize your movement and everything. Um, however, I am gonna quickly demonstrate one more thing that's actually very important, and that is uh, the lock picking in the two doors. I'll get to it in just a second when I reach that point again. So now I've ran through Prison Heist again, I've reached this point part again. Now this is a really important piece of info that will make repeat runs very easy to just farm prison over and over again for anyone who's interested in doing so. So one important uh, info that you guys should know is that uh, as long as you don't leave the prison island or quit to the main menu here, um, the lockpick locations for the doors will always remain in the same spot. Meaning that if I go up to this door right now, it will have the same lockpick sweet spot location as I just did uh, in the previous part of this video just now. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. Uh, do note though that this specific door is, is two doors that are locked. So there's a left and white right one. So if you're confused and it's like, hold on, there's different. Well, there's a left door and a right door that you can pick that have different locks. But I picked the left one last time. So I'm going to pick the left one again. And you're going to see it's going to be in the exact same location. So let me just uh, get my cloak potion ready. Even though you don't really need it now since you know the locations. But I'm going to just demonstrate that. through, left door, and it was about here last time, boom, it's in the exact same spot again. And this also applies to the volatile door, we'll see later on, I'll skip ahead to just that moment. Alright, I'm back here uh, at the volatile door, I can't actually remember where it was, um, but 
uh, I'll just do it for the sake of the video and you'll see that it's going to be in the exact same location as it was when I first did this earlier in the video. So I'm here, I believe it was on the right hand side maybe. Oh, you see my flare is in a dodgy position right now. So let me just put this here, drink another cloak potion just to reset, and now we're good. It's on the right hand side, no, it was on the left hand side. About here, so it was about here last time. But yeah, you'll notice that it's in the same location as it was last time. So, if you want to run prison over and over again, uh, that's a good thing to know that you can just simply use the shotguns over and over again, restock them at the final area, use the same thing with the rifles. Um, notice that there wasn't any SMG ammo, so as I said, don't use SMGs, uh, but you can use a uh, pistol if you want, I don't know why you would. And up to personal playstyle, you can use whatever kind of melee weapon you want if you run out of ammo. Um, but yeah, that's about the basic gist of it. Um, that's pretty much everything you really need to know about repeat runs of this. Um, yeah, get cracking and, and just lower your time more and more. This isn't a speedrun, there's plenty of strats I don't really cover that could make you speedrun faster, but the idea of a casual speedrun, of a, of a, sorry, of a casual prison run is to minimize effort uh, and have maximum efficiency when it comes to just farming, because that's what a lot of people try to play prison for, and I believe this is the best possible way you could do so, and I hope this guide has helped people um, will help you guys to uh, be a better farmer when it comes to prison. Maybe you guys want to even improve and become a speedrunner. Maybe I'll I'll make a updated guide on that. But in any case, that's about it. I'll leave a guide for the Quidag in the description below. And for those of you who don't know uh, how to get the Cloak Potion, I'll leave someone else's guide on how to get the Cloak Potion as well in the description below, because those are very key items. And um, and uh, will be nice to you know get your time lower and ignore things because you do not need to not fight that many people. Only the end arena here and the arena back with all the guards. But that's about it. I hope you guys enjoy guys enjoyed that. Uh, thank you very much. Have a good one.